Today on Karamo, he transitioned, and now the father of his child won't accept him. Why can't you accept him as Jamar? This isn't the person that I met. He was my best friend. Plus, Big Frida, the queen of bounce, is in the house. I had people who tried to bully me. I had to fight to be who I wanted to be. Then, I had never looked at my child and said, I hate you. Take care. You will never disrespect a child. Karamo, y'all ready to have a good show today? Because I am. Today is a very special show for me because as many of you know, my identity of who I am starts at the intersection of me being a very proud black man and a very proud gay man. Those parts of my identity are the source of so much joy, community, and love in my life. But if I can be honest with you all, it has also come with many challenges. From family members, friends abandoning me, to trying to physically hurt me because they couldn't reconcile their relationship with their religion and their relationship with me. Even though I was still the same person, or times when people I knew or didn't know tried to get my biological son removed from my home because they thought a gay man shouldn't be raising a child alone. Can you imagine that? So for everyone at home, whether you support the LGBT community or you're still trying to reconcile your own feelings, today is a day for you to see the experiences and humanity in people who might have never engaged with otherwise. So, there's so much to cover in this hour. Also, I wanna let you all know we have a big surprise guest. New Orleans Queen of Bounce, Big Frida, is in the house. Y'all all, all know this. Y'all know Big, big Frida's big song. Beyonce, Big Frida, okay. We're gonna to talk to him later about his personal journey. But first, let's meet Jamar, who is a former healthcare worker and a father to a beautiful three-year-old daughter. Jamar is also a transgender man who faces discrimination and judgment daily. But recently, that discrimination and judgment has been coming from someone close to him. Let's see what's going on. My name is Jamar, but I wasn't born a male. I was born a female, and my name was Lucretia. Four years ago, I began taking hormones, and I started living my life as a trans male. During that time, I met my ex, Damien. We fell in love and he begged me to have a baby with him. Now let me be clear, Damien knew I was transitioning to be a man the whole time. Before I was Jay Moore, I was Lucretia, and that's who Damien is stuck on, and that is never happening, not going back. Damien disrespects me. He says he won't allow our daughter to be raised by two men, and I'm angry. I'm tired of arguing. I need Karamo's help. I need to get it through Damien's head that I am Jamar. Welcome, Jamar. Hey! Can I have a hug? How you doing? Good, how are you doing? Great. Good to see you! Nice to see you. Thank you for being here with me today. Pleasure so, to be here. So, Jamar, I want to find out first, you and Damien, how did your relationship start? We met through friends. He slid up in my DM trying to flirt with me eventually. <laughs> and we was just like best okay, friends. Okay, <laughs> okay. If y'all don't know, it goes down in the DMs, all right? <laughs> Check y'all DMs. I was open, man. You know I'm open-minded. So we was friends for a minute. And then I ended up stopping my testosterone shots because it was too high. Mm. And that's where he wanted to take things a little farther. And he kept begging me to be Lucretia. So eventually I just let it out. So when you were in the beginning of your relationship, Damien understood that you wanted to transition because yeah, you were taking testosterone. Yeah, yes. Got it. So even at that time, Damien was pressuring you not to be your authentic self. Yes. Why stay in a relationship if you were unhappy? Because I loved him and I'm a people pleaser. Mm. And, you know, I, once I fall in love with somebody, my, my goal is to please you. Mm -hmm. like, what I appreciate about you is you having the strength to say, no, 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 that's not what I'm gonna do. This is who I am, and this is what I need to do. So yes. I appreciate that for you. Thank you yes. so much. So what is it like for you to be a parent? It's wonderful, yeah. it's really wonderful. Yeah. The biggest support you can have is your kids, for real. Amen like, to that, okay? Yes. I love it. <laughs> and when you were pregnant with your child, was it an easy pregnancy? Was it something that 
was simple for you? Like, what was that birth process for you? It was easy. It was easy? It was easy. How was your health during that time? It was actually good until I had her. Okay, what happened when you gave I birth? I had her two months later, My, uh, I went into a crisis and my heart stopped. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What happened? Can you please tell me? Um, my heart stopped because I guess two months later after I had her, I ended up with manistia gravis and I ended up in a crisis in the hospital. So after I woke up in the hospital, I was kind of confused because, you know, I went to, my heart stopped as Lucretia, but when I woke up, the bed had Jay Moore on it, him. I was confused, like, where did this come from? And they were like, you did that. And, and all the hospital systems was Jay Moore, him, and it was, everybody was approaching me as a man. I woke up and Jay Moore was fully woke. Like, well, I didn't I, even. I, I, what I think about that is exceptional, that even one of your hardest moments, your true authentic soul still spoke up. It felt it, yeah. It felt it. Yep. Like if this is the moment that I'm going to meet my maker, I'm going to meet my maker as me. Can you imagine that? Yes. <laughs> You're pretty amazing. Thank you. Pretty amazing. Listen, I think it's important that Damien accepts you as Jamar. Yes. Do you think it's important that Damien it accepts is. you as Jamar? It is. Like, I honestly know because as Lucretia, he put life into me. Like, when I tell you, he slayed me. Anything y'all see <laughs> on pictures, he did that. Yeah. I don't know how to really In case y'all don't know what slay me mean, it means to make me look good, to make yeah. me feel confident. Yeah. He, All right? He made, made sure Lucretia was confident. He yes. put so much life into me, but when I'm Jay Moore, he, like, he told me, I'm not buying you no clothes. You got to do everything yourself. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not a dresser. Like, you know, mm -hmm. so I mean, he never really today. put, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. He never put life into Jay Moore. Yeah, that's fine. I will say this, though. Even though he might not be giving Jay Moore the life he deserves, what I can tell already is that you have the power within you to give yourself that life. Thank you so much. All right, listen, everyone. When we come back, I'm going to talk to Damien. Stay tuned. Coming up. This isn't the person that I met. I created this beautiful black woman that promised me. My producer said that you wanted me to ask you about your sexual orientation. How do you identify? I, I, I... Now there's a layer here that I did not just expect. So when you were in the beginning of your relationship, Damien understood that you wanted to transition because yeah, you take testosterone. Yeah, yes. As Lucretia, he put life into me. But when I'm Jay Moore, he never put life into me. Welcome back, everyone. We have been talking to Jay Moore, who is a transgender man, and he wants his ex to accept him for who he is. Everyone, please welcome Damien to the stage. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Give me a hug. What's up? Take a seat. All right. So, I have to start off. Thank you for being here so much. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. I got to start off and say, what's going on? I mean, I just don't. This is the, this isn't the person that I met. I, I that I created. I created this beautiful black woman that I promised me, that promised me to marry me, to give me no, children. Great. Krisha was powerless. That's why I didn't really mm -hmm. have a voice. You it was everything I had. Your, uh, so I want to know this because I can see that you're struggling. I can see this. But you also use language that is ownership language, mm -hmm. that, is, yeah. that, that is language of like, I deserve this, mm -hmm. about another human being. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy. And I want to know, so why can't you just accept your best friend? Lucretia promised me this future that I just couldn't let go. And it made me feel like a man. You know mm. what I'm saying? But you never even gave me a chance to say goodbye to Lucretia. You just killed her. You never even gave me be, a chance. You wasn't never going to end it. But, but think about her daughter. Like, how, how like... She's going to respect me no matter who I am. I just... I want... I, Jamar, I want to hear a little bit about Damien's side because the thing is, you asked for help. And for me to really help, I need to know more about where okay. did this start from? I have a question for you. I don't know this answer, but my, my producer said that you wanted me to ask you about your sexual orientation. How well, do you identify? I, I, I'm gay. I'm a gay black man. Mm -hmm. Now there's a layer here that I did not just expect. Yeah. So you identify as a gay black man. Yes, sir. So 
as a gay black man, someone who's in this community and understands the oppression, these things, mm -hmm. why are you then imposing that impression and judgment on someone else, especially someone who you called your best friend, being a member of this community? She promised me to be Lucretia forever. Okay. And that's what, that's what, I, that's what I wanted. That's you, what I want. For, I'm gonna ask you for a favor. Mm -hmm. While on my stage, yes, would sir. you be able to please refer to Jamar as he? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I, I understand you're going through your journey. I do understand that. But on this stage, it's all about respecting individuals of where they are, what their pronouns are, and Absolutely. how they identify. You just gave me a lot to think about right there because I wasn't aware. I thought that I was dealing with someone who identified as heterosexual mm -hmm. and identified as straight. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? Now there's a layer of this. I want to know, now that I'm hearing that you identify as gay, did your family accept you? Did your mother accept you? Um, well, not at first. So um, I did eight years in the federal penitentiary. Mm -hmm. So when I came home, um, her and my sister had like a little debacle and that's how it came out. Um, and that's how I was exposed. So, you know, when she found out, she said, well, you're going to be like, you know, a hard gate. You're going to be a, a gangster. It was hard for me too, you know? And when I found something to cover that hardship up, it, it was easy. I understand that. I, I, I'm listening to you and I get it. You are grieving. Jamar gave you safety. It's not that I don't want to agree with you, Karamo. I really, I, you know, it ain't about, we ain't gonna play tough, I don't wanna play tough with Having someone you. who identified as female and presented as female made you feel safe. That's point blank. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Period. That's what it is. Period. Yeah. And that's gone. So I'm hearing now, you're not really grieving the fact that Lucretia transitioned to Jamar. You're grieving, how am I gonna be safe in this world? You're grieving, how do I explain to my mom I can't give you what you need? You're grieving all of the people who told you you're not good enough, and now you feel like they're going to be right. And you want to know something, Karama? I knew we wasn't going to, if I stayed Lucretia, we wasn't going to be together in the future because that's not who he was in love with, for real. He fell in love with the thought of Lucretia and his mom's happiness. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I just got trapped. All right, so when it comes to your child, how do you feel about co-parenting? Um, I love it. We do do great as parents. Um, you know, Did um, you tell Jay Mar that you don't think your daughter should have two dads? I just don't like her to say, I don't, I want, I don't, I don't want her saying dad to both of us. It kind of, I, 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 I'm kind of confused with that. That's how just how I feel. That? I feel like, you know, two men can raise a kid. Listen, there's a lot to uncover here. So friends, stay with us because we'll be right back. Coming up, please welcome the queen of bounce, Big Frida. Where you just kind of do a little hey, side hey, to side. Hey, 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 hey. She promised me to be Lucretia forever. Okay. And that's you, what I want. If I stayed Lucretia, we wasn't gonna be together in the future because he fell in love with the thought of Lucretia and his mom's happiness. All right, welcome back, friends. We have been talking to Jamar and his ex, Damien. So listen, we've heard so much from each of you, and before I give you my ideas, is there anything else you all wanna say to each other? Well, I just wanna say, like, I don't really know if after this, he's, it's even going to be, like, he's ever going to even listen to you anyways. But, like, you know, I just wanted to say this. Like, I really struggle every day. I always wanted a gay friend, period, just to help me with my everyday dressing. He was that. And it's, I struggle every day with Jay Moore. And I just wish that he could be that best friend. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all. Like, yes, I get it. Damon, for you? Um, obviously, you know, we have a child together. Um, I'm talking to you. We got a child together. Um, I don't agree what was going on, but I hear you out. Right. Yeah, you and gotta I agree. Can be That's what I'm saying. You gotta understand, not just keep saying you what you think. You gotta really understand me. As a gay man, I don't understand how you don't understand me. Yeah. 
that's where I got hurt. So you asked me for help, and so here's my take on this. One of the things that I want you to understand that your experience, Damien, and this is important, because a lot of people within the LGBT community experience this. Mm -hmm. It's called internalized homophobia. Mm -hmm. It's where the messages you receive from the outside world, which are negative, which make you feel like you are not good enough, you start to feel like those messages are real, and you take them on. And when you take those messages on, you then start to look at the people around you and say, you're not right either. You're not right either. You're not right either. You're passing the hate that you received onto other people because you're scared and you feel as if you do that, then these other people are going to accept you. And this was based solely on the woman you love so much. And I'm not calling your mother a bad woman because she's on her journey as well. What I'm saying is, unfortunately, she did you a disservice because she made you feel as if you can't have the life you want and deserve, a loving family, a healthy relationship, because of the fact that you love who you love. And I'm here to tell you, you can release that internalized homophobia. You deserve love. You deserve respect. And you deserve to be who you are. But as you're on that journey, you don't deserve to disrespect your ex. You don't deserve to let them feel like they're not good enough because you're on a journey to feel good yourself. And at the bottom line, there is a child that needs both of you. And that child has two dads who are beautiful, who are black, and who are smart, and who are going to love that child and raise them. But if you only show them hate and show them what your mother showed you and let them take it on, you're going to have a horrible experience. Mm -hmm. So don't do to what your child, what your parent did to you. Yes. You got it? Yes. Yeah. All right, I want to say good luck to Jamar and Damien. Thank you. And when you. we come back, Big Frida is in the house. So don't go anywhere. because we're going to be checking in with one of my guests that was very special to me. Hey, Jamar, are you there? Yeah, hey, Karama, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. You look good, and you have been on my heart and my mind since I last saw you. So listen, I sent you a little surprise. So I wanted to get you your own wardrobe that you can feel comfortable with, that you can start dressing yourself, that you can have anything that you need. This is so, like, oh my God. <laughs> I want you to walk out in the world confident, feeling good about you who you are. I appreciate you, you so are, much. You're welcome. Don't nobody ever do stuff like this for me, so I really appreciate you so much. Look at the shoes. You like the shoes? Because I picked the shoes uh, up myself. This is nice. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the help. Of course. I love you. Enjoy those clothes. I love you so much. I love you. <laughs> Listen, friends, that is what I love to see. Jamar is about to be looking fresh, but more importantly, he's going to be walking through this world confident, knowing that he can conquer whatever comes his way. And that's what we're about here on the Karamo Show. Stay tuned. Friends, my next guest is a music icon and an activist for the LGBT plus community. And I want to talk to him about what he's been through in his life. Everyone, please welcome the queen of bounce, Big Frida. Hey! Hey, my baby. Oh my gosh, I love you. Take a seat. So I just have to take a moment because anywhere I go, y'all need to know, I give you your flowers. I Thank love you, you so and I love you since day one. So let's get right into it. This is your second time, number two, teaming up with Beyonce. What was yes. this experience like for you? I mean, it was uh, amazing just to be able to be called by Beyonce for a second time okay. for a song. <laughs> I am forever grateful to Beyonce. Um, you know, right now, this Renaissance project is something that's needed around the world mm -hmm. and Break My Soul has broke charts and... You number one, baby. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> I want for everyone who doesn't know, 
What is New Orleans bounce? What is bounce music? Because you are the queen of bounce and I know, but explain bounce. So in New Orleans, we call it shaking. You know, uh, <laughs> we shake, we wiggle, we wobble. Yes. We bust open, bend over, we hey. do it all. Hey, uh, baby. <laughs> but when I define bounce music, it's up tempo, it's heavy bass, it's call and respond type music, it's mm -hmm. a New Orleans bass music. And it, you know, from babies to grandmothers, it's a part of our culture and it's what we love and what we do down there. So the world is finally catching on. Yes. So to us, we know you as Big Frida. We know you as the Queen of Bounce. But when you are home in New Orleans, they know you and will always respect you as Freddie Ross. Most of. Yes. Tell us about your experience growing up in New Orleans. You know, growing up as a little black boy off of Josephine, um, mm. I did it all, I saw it all. You know, New Orleans is what helped me to be who I am. You know, from the neighborhoods to my church home, to my high school, my middle school, to my family and friends who help, you know, nourish me and, you know, make me the person that I am. Once I left Josephine Street, I also, you know, my next house was on Music Street. Really? Just, like yes, country music? Yes, <laughs> like I, I stayed on Music Street. Better so manifest. You never know how your journey may go. And mm -hmm. God already had, you know, this being my destiny to be in the music game and to do what I do, to bring all different walks of life together. Yes. The power of what I do at my shows and, and, and the joy I bring to people in their lives. Millions of people. Yeah, and joy. so um, we all have a purpose in life. And mm -hmm. when you learn your purpose and know what your purpose is, you fulfill those things and God will keep on blessing you. Really? Can you can you tell me about the bond that you had with your mother growing up in New Orleans? Oh, God. I mean, my mother was my biggest cheerleader. She was my protector. She was my everything. Yeah. I mean, anything that I wanted to do, she had my back. She mm -hmm. supported me in all of my, all of my many things. I mean, she kept me in line and, and, and made me respect myself mm. and respect others. Mm. Um, she also kept everybody else in line who may have tried to bully me or mm -hmm. anything. I mean, she fought for me like no other. Yes. And, um, you know, growing up, especially being gay, when you have your mother's support, you don't need no validation from anybody else. Amen. You know, yes. and um, so she allowed me to be who I was. She allowed me to live in my truth. So being gay in New Orleans when you were coming up, how is that different from what you've experienced now? So growing up in New Orleans back then, you know, being gay wasn't accepted like, like it is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to fight. You know, I had people who tried to bully me. I had, you know, to fight for to be who I wanted to be. Yeah. I also had a mission that I was going to be the first New Orleans gay person that any boy could come to and not feel like I'm stepping out of line with them. I can be their partner. They can dap me off. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have relationships with everybody. And yeah. I, so I worked really hard at that for many, many years. Yeah. I fought all my life and I'm gonna continue to fight to be able to open doors for the next generation of people that walks like me and talk yes. like me. Yes. And you know, anything that I can do to help the community and make the world a better place, I'm down and I'm, I'm fighting for my people. Anything mm -hmm. that's fighting for a great cause, I'm down for it. Frida, we are so thankful for the work you do, for the fights you make, and for the fact that you give us great music Thank to you. release our days and to feel good. So Everyone, much. please give it up for Icon Big Frida. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what I do? Look, I'm, I'm gonna do something real easy. Yes, okay. Where you just kind of do a little hey, side hey, to hey, side. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, don't hey. Hey. Listen, everyone at home, we will be right back. We'll be right back. Oh, love you so much. Coming up, you just said out of your own mouth that you've said to your child, I hate you. Take care. What I will never tolerate on my show is you will never disrespect a child as a parent. I knew that she'd be upset, but I didn't know that she'd like walk off the stage. Welcome back everyone. Today I've been speaking to members of the LGBT community who are in turmoil with their families. Now, 
Something I know to be true is that in most families, if there is a parent who is at odds with their child because that child identifies as gay, the negative feelings from the parent towards their gay child are pretty much black and white. But other times, the issues in some families can be more in that gray area, harder to see, which is what piqued my interest when my next guest called the show asking for help. Friends, meet Luke. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well that I'm here now. Okay, you look beautiful. Thank you. So Luke, tell me what's going on. So what's going on is I'm a young 24-year-old, proud LGBT musician from Austin. Yes. And I just want to be here on the show to show people that if they're LGBT or if they're struggling with their parents or things like that, that it can get better if they work on it. So I'm here to work on it. Yes, okay. I love that. I love that. So please, for me, describe your relationship with your mom. So I'd say that my relationship with my mom has been strained the past few years because we just argue a lot. Um, she's very in my business and she just oversteps her boundaries with things and I just need help setting those boundaries with her to have a healthy relationship. So my producers told me yeah. that your mother wasn't fully in your life. She wasn't. So, so what was it like growing up with her when she was there and what was it like without her? Well, growing up, it was really nice most of the time with her, um, but there was a custody battle between my parents and my mother lost. So when I was around 10 years old, I went to go live with my father and I didn't really see much of my mother after that until I turned 18. It's not often you hear about a mother in a custody battle losing custody. Yeah. Normally the courts side with the mother. Do you know from your experience what happened there? Why you had to live with your father? I think that the reason is because there was just a lot of issues between them and I think at the end of the day it was just who battled it out better in court because there's honestly good and bad to both of them. So, Did you see her at all during that time? I saw her for supervised visits every maybe month or so, okay. depending, sometimes okay. not so even. So once a month? Oh, you said so not even? Not even all the time. Okay. It was just really hard because the lack of consistency and time that we spent with each other, it was only a few hours that we would get also. So Got it. our relationship kind of just dwindled. So how did you and your mother reconnect? We weren't allowed to have phone contact. So when I turned 18, she finally got my number and we met up after texting and calling a little bit. So before 18, your mother wasn't allowed to have, your, have phone contact with you? No. All supervised visits? Yes. This is all interesting. Okay, when did your mom find out that you self-identify as gay? She found out actually um, after I turned 18. She mm -hmm. didn't really have an idea, she said before, and I thought that was kind of surprising because look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, girl, you got eyes, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she found out, she said she saw a social media post on my Instagram, mm. and that's how she found out. Got it. So she found out about the authentic person you are on Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Wow. And what, what was her response when she saw the post? So on my social media, I definitely post a lot, and some of it is a little hypersexualized, as a lot of things are in the LGBT community, and mm -hmm. I think that she has a problem with that. Me dressing like this, she just thinks that she... Go back, because you said me dressing like this. What do you mean by that? She just thinks that, why can't you just be normal? Why can't you just wear like what normal boys wear? Like, mm -hmm. why, why do you have to be so out there? Why do you have to be over the top? Why do you have to be so extra? Because your gender identity is male. Yes. Or they. Well, I'm honestly still figuring that out for myself. Amen. So you're on a journey. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm still on that journey. Perfect. Okay, good. And so though you're on that journey, she's having issues with you being on that journey. I think that her issue is everything that comes with the journey. Mm. Okay, that's interesting to hear. Listen, everyone, when we come back, Luke's mom, Mary, will get a chance to respond. Don't go anywhere. Coming up. I think you might be projecting, to be honest. Let me tell you something very clearly. Take care. You are the fire. Get off my stage.
My relationship with my mom has been strained. She just oversteps her boundaries with things, and I just need help setting those boundaries with her to have a healthy relationship. Okay, we're talking to Luke about his broken relationship with his mom. Everyone, please help me welcome Mary to the show. Hi, Mary. Hi. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Please take a seat. Well, I can see where Luke got um, their looks from, okay? <laughs> All right. Ten years is a long time not to be in contact it is. with your child. Yeah. Tell me what was going on there. Yeah, so let me clarify. Um, Luke and I did go through a very long, contentious custody dispute that lasted around ten years. Um, we did have contact twice a month. We had visits. We also had holiday visits with my parents. Um, but it was still strained because we weren't able to communicate between those visits. Got it. I'm a very dedicated mom, um, love my son to death, and um, our, my issues with him now are partially about him being in the gay community and how, the choices he's made with certain unsavory friends and toxic, um, sexualized, over-sexualized maybe situations. However, I have been very accepting of him mm -hmm. in every way. During that time that you didn't get to see your child, what life were you building in your head? Because this is the thing, as parents, I know this just for myself, we start to imagine our child's future. Exactly. And especially when you're not around them. Right. What, what life were you building in your head when you weren't around So, your to be honest and to be fair, he played every sport, baseball, soccer, uh, ran track, <laughs> basketball. Um, he was gonna get married and have kids. And then I did find out on social media that he was gay and um, I was shocked just because of, I mean, I don't know if I was in a little in denial, but I never honestly didn't see the signs. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't see him. Yeah. You say Luke is irresponsible and naive. Um, just recently, he picked up a homeless gay guy from California um, who flew out here to live with Luke. Fast forward, the kid gets my son's name tattooed across his chest. That was a red flag and an alarm bell for me. Um, the kid just recently totaled his car. So there's been other situations. There was a situation where one of his friends called me at four in, mo four in the morning claiming Luke was missing. And um, I don't know if this was a prank, but for five hours I didn't know where he was. I had to call the police all the police stations. Um. I just have a few things to say about please, what she's just said. Yeah, please tell me what you think. I honestly think that my mom can have her opinion on the friends that I have, but at the end of the day, it's my choice and my life and my journey that mm -hmm. I have to go through and I have to make the mistakes to learn from them. Yeah. Right. And the thing like my mom does is if I'm arguing with a friend, she'll go out of her way to go message them on social media and wow. blow the situation out of proportion. Also with the me being missing, my phone was literally just lost. So that like... Okay, but your friends did call me at four o'clock in the morning yeah. claiming you were missing. Well, my phone was just lost and then she started calling the police station and everything and I'm like, chill out. Like, my phone's that's just what lost. A re that's what a responsible parent would do. And then, I, yeah, I, that one I get, 100%. Yeah. Somebody yeah. call me at 4 a.m. to say my child is missing, I'm gonna be on every dial on calling everything. It is what it is. <laughs> So that one, as a parent, I do understand. But when you take it further, like you just said, with social media and then message someone's friends, now that's something I don't do. No, I've done that once or twice. And she comments like but mean things on their posts. She just blows up situations that could be dealt with in a better What mean better things manner. has she said? She, one day she says she hates me, never wants to see me again. The next day she loves me. So I never really know exactly what I'm gonna get from her. Your child just said that you say things like, I hate you, and then say, the next day I love you. Right, and I have regretted that, but I, I, I think there's a big chunk that we're missing here. Tell me. The story. Um, and, and I'm not trying to clear, justify that. Where does that come from? Let's, it, it, here's where it comes from. He's put me through a lot of stress. The poor decision making, the calling me up, I don't get it, I, I get no respect. It is a respect issue for me. There's mm -hmm. a lot of rudeness, a lot of disrespect, a lot of um, blowing me off, putting me last on the, on the list, and I'm the one who's always there. You're here now. Exactly. And so I'm looking at the patterns and behavior. There was many years you weren't there. Well, I was there. 
I wasn't allowed to be there. I was there. I went to the school for parent teacher your conference. Your child's feelings were that you weren't there. Well, his feelings are valid, but so are mine. They are valid, but as a parent and as a parent to another parent, when your child says you weren't there, that impact has a greater impact on what our child goes through versus what we went through. Right. You know what, this is a good place for a break. We'll be right back. Coming up. I think you might be projecting, to be honest. Let me tell you something very clearly. Take care. You have a great day. One day she says she hates me, and the next day she loves me. So I never really know exactly what I'm gonna get from her. It is a respect issue for me. There's a lot of rudeness, a lot of disrespect, and I'm the one who's always there. There was many years you weren't there. I wasn't allowed to be there. I was there. Okay, everybody, we are back with Luke and his mom. There's something that I, I, I wanna say, because I'm listening, I wanna connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And so, as much as I know that you love your child, and I do believe you love your child, mm -hmm. I do believe there were some unhealthy behaviors in the past, mm -hmm. and I believe those unhealthy behaviors are still rearing their head now. In this moment, I do believe when I hear things about how you're acting and mm -hmm. how you talk about your child, mm -hmm. that you call their, who they are, a lifestyle. Just let y'all know very much, anytime you say to someone who is gay or trans that their life is a lifestyle, you would not like to be told that who you are is a lifestyle. <laughs> this is just who your child is. Right. Secondly, when you say things about unsavory friends, when you say things like they're, they're not good, these things are something that I know to be true is called implicit stereotype. Let me teach you this really quickly. Implicit stereotype, because I see you're shaking your head, but because I'm very knowledgeable. I'm talking, I'm talking about, about experiences I've had with them personally. I, listen, I understand. And what we you're don't talking have all about. day to talk about it, but we I, actually do. We on my show. Okay. So we do have all day. When it comes to implicit stereotypes. What that means is when you have feelings that have already been deep down inside of you. Mm -hmm. I asked you that question about what life did you build in your head about your child? Because that life and that thought pattern and any feelings you had attached to the LGBT community are showing their head now. Even though you're saying, I'm there, I wanna be there. Let me, let I'm telling you from your actions, you are still showing that implicit feelings of, well, I don't know if I really feel like this is right for you. I don't know if you're making the right choices because you built something in your head that they are not living up to. I think you're making into blowing it out of proportion <laughs> because my son can speak for that. Why don't you speak on that? Have I been accepting of you and your lifestyle again, and your choices? Again, again, you just said lifestyle. I said you and your lifestyle. I said it's not a lifestyle. You can't do that. You cannot I say to. I said you and your lifestyle. But I am teaching you right now that you cannot say you and lifestyle. Just say you. It's just say you. But have I been accepting of you? See, I, I'm here to support you. And I'm here to also make sure that you don't walk away feeling as if you're a bad guy, because I don't think you're a bad guy. And I want to be clear about yeah. that. Yeah. But I, I do believe there's some education that needs to happen. I honestly think that my mom loves me very much. And I think that now she accepts me way more than she probably could have in the beginning. And the reason that is, is because there's still things from how you perceived your child's life should be that is still coming up. You just said out of your own mouth that you've said to your child, I hate you. You've said it. You, not, for be, not for being gay, sir. Not for being gay. Okay, like I said. That's absolutely. I'm telling you something. You, things come out of you. What's in you gonna come out of you? And that's what I know to be true. My best friend said that all the time. What's in you gonna come out of you? And what's in you is that there's something about your there child been, you hate. There have so been, whether you want to admit it or not, it came out of you. I, I don't actually think she hates me. I think she just says things to hurt my feelings yes. when I don't do I don't it. think she hates you either. But what I'm saying to you is there's something within her yeah. that she's been feeling that when you say something, I've never as a parent. Let me just let I you know. I think you might be projecting, to be <laughs> honest. Let me tell you something. My child, let me tell you something very clearly. My child is right there. I have never looked at my child and said, I hate you. So I can tell you very clearly that Take there's care. nothing. You have a great day. So let me tell you something, because no, this is really great. Because what I will never tolerate on my show is for anyone to tell me, first of all, that I don't know what I'm talking about, but also you will never disrespect a child as a parent. Because at the end of the day, I do believe your mother loves you, but I do believe there's something within her that is not allowing her to respect you and treat you the way you deserve to be treated. Yeah, I just want things to be good with her one day. Yes, I know that. But the unfortunate part, because I see you get emotional right now. What's, what are you feeling? It's just, I knew that she'd be upset 
when like things were talked about, but I didn't know that she'd like walk off the stage. It's because she's not ready yet to face what's really going on. That is not about you. That's about her feeling like I just got caught. Yeah. I just had a mirror put up to my face. And the unfortunate part is that you're her child, so she knows she can get away with it. I'm a grown man. She can't get away with it with me. Yeah. But I want you to know you don't deserve that. Yeah. Come here, give me a hug. You're gonna be all right, you're gonna be all right. Listen, everyone, take a seat with me. Listen, everyone, today felt good because it was a moment where people's biases were challenged. And I got a chance to support some LGBT folks and their families. Listen, as we both know, discrimination is hard. But what I know to be true is that you, at home listening to me, have the strength within you to overcome any challenge you're facing. And it never forget, there's a community of people who want to love you and support you. Never give up. Friends, we must never stop respecting, communicating, and loving each other. It's the only way. I love you all. Gay. I've never judged you for being gay, ever. I want you to know that, ever. Never. <laughs>